Her friend called her up and asked if the little girl could come spend the weekend with her. She agreed. It was the weekend of Halloween and she knew that her 15 month old daughter would have fun handing out candy and seeing the trick or treaters. But this weekend would be one that she would ultimately live to regret. Welcome back. I'm Cassie and this is A Wicked World. The story I have for you today shows just how vile and wicked some people can be, and for seemingly no reason. This case leaves me with a lot of unanswered questions. Let me know what you think at the end. This is the story of Mika Carrillo. Mika Marie Carrillo, or Mika Dushino, was born on August 1st, 2019 in Fargo, North Dakota. Her parents were Manuel Carrillo and Cheyenne Dushino. Mika was a bubbly and loving toddler who was always giggling. She had taken her first steps right around her first birthday, and she was also adored by her cousins and sister. Mika was a very good baby who rarely cried, and she loved giving her family hugs and kisses all the time. For reasons unknown, Ever since Mika was born, she was in the custody of her aunt, Amanda Carrillo. And only a few months after Mika was born, her real mother would die of unknown causes, and her father would be sent to jail for fleeing in a vehicle, methamphetamine possession, reckless driving, and driving on a suspended license. So since Amanda had had custody of Mika for so long, she thought of her more as a daughter than as a niece. And Amanda also had children of her own, who all adored their cousin or sister, Mika. So on the weekend of Halloween in 2020, a longtime trusted family friend by the name of Brandy Adelke asked Amanda if Mika could sleep over for the weekend. Now Brandy had watched Amanda's other children in the past with no problems. So when she came to ask her if Mika could spend the weekend, she figured why not? And she knew that Mika would have fun, possibly handing out candy and seeing the trick-or-treaters. So the day before Halloween, October 30th, Amanda would drop Mika off at Brandy's Fargo, North Dakota apartment. So after the weekend went by, Amanda went over Brandy's house to pick up Mika. This is when Brandy told her that Mika actually had a fever because somebody in the house had contracted COVID and they needed to quarantine together for two weeks. So she told her that she would need to keep Mika at her house for two more weeks. Amanda, for whatever reason, agreed to this. If it was my kid, I tell you, I don't care. They're coming home with me. They're not spending another two weeks at a friend's house. No way. But that's just me. So more than two weeks later, when the quarantine period should have been over on November 20th, Brandy showed up at Amanda's house. But she didn't have Mika with her. She told Amanda that Mika was on her way to the hospital. But it was only because she was sick. She was just sick. Nothing else was wrong. That's what Brandy told her, at least. So Brandy told Amanda that she would meet her at the hospital. And Amanda wondered to herself, why hadn't Brandy gone in the ambulance with Mika? She was only 15 months old. That's a little odd. So Amanda rushed to Sanford Health, where Mika had been transported to. When she arrived, Amanda saw that there were CPS workers as well as police officers who were holding brown paper evidence bags and rulers that were meant to measure Mika's wounds. They also had on them evidence recording equipment. This immediately made Amanda feel sick to her stomach. And Amanda couldn't control herself. She looked over at Brandy and said, what did you do to my niece? And Brandy replied with, She's just sick. She's just sick, Amanda. She's fine. She's gonna be fine. And Amanda yelled back at her, this does not look fine. When the police officers at the hospital spoke with Amanda, it became very clear that Brandy was lying. Mika was a lot more than just sick. Mika had actually been horribly abused that weekend at Brandy's. The little girl had been beaten, burned with chemicals, given alcohol, and raped in multiple ways. Due to all of Mika's injuries, 
She had been put into protective services when she arrived at the hospital. And unfortunately, the doctors had to put little Mika on life support due to her extensive injuries and she had no brain activity. This was most likely because Mika had been dead for two minutes before anyone had even tried to resuscitate her. The doctors had very little hope that Mika would pull through. And then just four days later, on November 24th, 2020, she still had no brain activity, at which point her family decided to unplug her life support, and Mika Carrillo was pronounced dead. Apparently, at 10.30 p.m. on November 20th, Brandy had called the emergency first responders. When the first responders arrived to the apartment, which was located on 17th Street South in Fargo, they found that Mika had a weak pulse, was unresponsive, her skin was blue, and she had suspicious bruising throughout her entire body. When police asked Brandy what had happened, she said that she had given Mika a bath because the little girl had been running a fever. She then told them that she left her in the bath by herself for up to two hours unsupervised. She said during these two hours, that's when Mika slipped underwater and she doesn't know how long she was under the water for. Since, you know, she wasn't watching her like she was supposed to because she's the babysitter. When the investigators asked Brandy about Mika's suspicious bruising, she said they were the result of the life-saving measures she had performed on Mika when she had stopped breathing. She said that she had pinched and slapped the toddler's face in an effort to get her to regain consciousness. She claimed that Mika actually had regained consciousness briefly. She had coughed, and then Brandy said she gave her some juice. She claims that after this, Mika again fell unresponsive, and it was at that time that she called 911. Police also said that the claims of COVID-19 infecting Brandy's apartment were completely false. Now, for some reason, police said they needed to wait for the autopsy report as well as the toxicology report to come back before they could arrest anyone because they wanted to make sure that a crime had actually been committed, which blows my effing mind. Like, isn't that the most obvious thing in the world that a crime has been committed? Just looking at the little girl? Come on. During this waiting period, while nobody was being arrested for Mika's brutal death, her aunt Amanda said that there had been numerous people that had known about the abuse that was going on, and they had all failed to reach out for help and let the abuse continue until it was too late. So Amanda wanted to see not only Brandy prosecuted, but also the people who had just stood by and let this happen. Though it's never been revealed who these other people were and what they had seen. So when Mika's autopsy was finally completed, it was determined that the little girl's cause of death was homicide, caused by numerous blunt force injuries that were found to be non-accidental and inflicted by another person. And Amanda would say that there were even more horrific details about the torture and murder of Mika, but she doesn't want the world to have to know those details and suffer as her and her family keep replaying it over and over in their minds. So on January 14th, 2021, 37-year-old Brandy Adelke was arrested and charged. She was charged with one count of murder and one count of felony child abuse. Brandy requested to get a $1,000 bail, and she wanted to be put on house arrest instead of being in prison until her trial date. She said it was because she had just recently started a new job. Okay, and you just murdered a child, so your new job can go shove it. The court instead slapped her with a $1 million bail bond. In September of 2021, when her trial started, Brandy Adelke pleaded guilty to one felony count each of murder and child abuse in the Cass County District Court after she had initially entered a plea of not guilty. She was now facing a maximum penalty of life in prison. During the trial, the state attorney would tell the court that Mika was covered head to toe in bruises. And he added, usually I say that metaphorically, but not in this incident. Brandy's defense attorney would say that her watching Mika had proved to just be too much for her. And instead of reaching out for help, she had just made a tragic mistake. 
all the injuries on that little girl is a lot more than just a mistake. And when it came time for Mika's family to read their victim impact statements out loud, Brandy began to cry. A letter written by Mika's grandmother, Cindy Carrillo, was read out loud. She wrote about how her and her family had to take her granddaughter off of life support only three months after they had just celebrated her first birthday. My husband and I had to watch our family listen to the devastating news about a beautiful little girl who was beaten and tortured by somebody that we trusted. We had to watch our son make the toughest decision of his life to pull the plug and let his baby stop suffering. I would not wish this on anyone, not even you, Brandy. She also added that the police had told the family to not read Mika's autopsy report because it would forever change them. And one of the things that Amanda would say while she was reading her victim impact statement was, I don't understand how you take the life of an innocent child and what she could have done so badly that made you hurt her like this. I know I will never get the answers to these questions. I feel pain anytime I walk through the door because there's something missing. I feel pain when I hear my kids laugh because Mika's laughter is missing. And Amanda also said that she will never forgive herself for letting Brandy watch her niece Mika that weekend. Brandy also spoke and said she didn't mean for this to happen. Not sure how you didn't mean for all those injuries to happen because they're not accidental. I'm sorry to the family. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for things to happen. And I'm just, I'm sorry. I feel pain every time I walk through my door because there's something missing. I feel pain every time I hear my kids laugh because there's a little laughter missing. It was barely one year ago when Amanda Carrillo's world changed forever. Never in a million years, like she's watched almost everybody's kids and like nobody ever thought that this she would do something like this. A friend of the Carrillo family for over five years, Brandy Adelke was having a sleepover with 15 month old Mika at her South Fargo apartment last November when Adelke's defense attorney says Adelke just couldn't handle it anymore. I don't understand how you could take her life from an innocent child and what she could have done so badly that made you hurt her. When admitted to the hospital, doctors and investigators found blunt force trauma up and down Mika's small body. Details so gruesome, Cass County State's Attorney Ryan Youngren declined to recount. In a letter to the court penned by Mika's grandmother, Cindy, she wrote of the immense heartache felt by the family, words that choked up even the seasoned prosecutor. Mika's three-year-old sister, Octavia, asks when Mika gets bigger, will she wake up and play with me? How do you explain that to a three-year-old? I would not wish this, this on anyone, not even you, Brandy. Adelke's sentence comes directly from the wishes of Mika's father, who Carrillo says was adamant he didn't want Adelke to spend the rest of her life in prison. I will forgive her, but I would never forget what she's done. He's like, me, me giving her a life sentence is not going to bring my daughter back. Carrillo says her family will never be the same and says while she's glad Adelke finally took responsibility, justice won't ever fully be served without Mika here in the world. She was sentenced by a Cass County District Court judge to 50 years and she would be eligible for parole after 30. And I just wanted to note as well that many news outlets have it reported as her only receiving 30 years. However, she did receive 50 and after 30, like I said, that's when she can possibly receive parole. A private funeral mass was held for Mika, which was live streamed on Saturday, February 6, 2021. And in August of 2021, Mika's family celebrated what would have been her second birthday. The family said each day is a reminder of the life that was taken far too soon. And Amanda said that Mika's sister Octavia turns to Mika's urn every night. She'll sing her rockabye baby, and then she kisses the urn and says, she's up there. Then she will smile and tell Amanda, I'm going to bed now. And the family also sold Justice for Mika shirts and car decals to raise money to plant a tree in Gooseberry Park in Mika's honor. Well, thank you for listening to all of Mika's story today. Like I said, I just have a lot of questions that remain unanswered in this case. My first being, why? What was this woman's motive? especially after being friends with Amanda and the family for years. And did Brandy tell Amanda that somebody in the house had COVID 
because she was already looking kind of beaten and bruised and she wanted to maybe give her time to recover. Clearly she didn't, but maybe that was the thought. Or was this already planned ahead of time? And that's why she needed to keep her for the additional two weeks. Not to mention, Brandy was the one who originally asked to have Mika sleep over. So it seems like it might have been premeditated. I'm also very curious about who these other people were that saw the abuse going on and didn't do anything. Because nobody else has been prosecuted. So it's absolutely heartbreaking what this poor little baby had to go through. Vile and senseless. So if you do like true crime and you want to hear it from me, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and turn on your notifications too so you'll know when I upload a new video, which is two to three times every week. Thanks for watching A Wicked World today. Until next time, take care guys. Bye. Thank you for being patrons of A Wicked World. Adina, Amy, Angela, Angie, Beatrice, Catherine, Danielle D, Danielle H, Drew, SJ, Frank, Hannah Rama, Kara, Mary, Mel, MJ Kelly, Neoma, Stephanie, and Tammy. You guys rock. Now, there's even more of a wicked world on Patreon. You'll have access to exclusive videos each month and more. Any support truly helps to make sure the victims never get forgotten and to highlight the shortcomings of society associated with each case. So check it out at patreon.com slash a wicked world or use the Patreon app.